Hey everybody, it's me, Greco Fabulous. Wah! So um, I was all set up to to shoot my 2018 Motor City Comic Con haul. You know, I figured with my last video, I'd show you you know year old footage that isn't relevant anymore, and I, you know, and a total inside joke that nobody would ever care about except us in the little uh, Motor City Comic Con posse. And now I'm going to follow it up with something actually topical. So this past weekend was Motor City Comic Con 2018. Um, originally, I wasn't going to go. Retro. Ugh, I feel like nothing I do is ever good enough for you. Where have I been? Blah, blah, blah. What do you mean? I put out a video like last week. How often do you want these things? Ugh, don't make me yell at you on live YouTube television. Uh, anyways, so <laughs> uh, I wasn't going to go to this year's Motor City Comic Con. I, uh, you know, it's one of those things where I kind of take a year off in between. I don't want, I don't want the guys to get sick of me. So kind of, kind of leave things open and, um, you know, I don't always have the budget for it. And, but this is one of those things, you know, it was at the 11th hour. I was like, I really need to get away because life is so hard day in, day out, just being me. I kind of needed a break. So, uh, luckily, flights to Michigan, surprisingly, aren't very expensive. Uh, my flight there cost $35, which was more, uh, less expensive than one day at Comic-Con, which is kind of a scary thought. But I went with uh, Spirit Airlines, which I've never flown before, but they're, like, really cheap. and um, But they, they'll, like, nickel and dime you if you want to, like, you know, bring a carry-on bag or anything like that, any, any of the kind of the nice cities of air travel, which I kind of shy away from and don't really need. So I literally could just carry on like a small backpack, which was unfortunate because um, I want, like usually when we meet up with the guys, you know, it's not necessary and I know nobody wants and is going to ask for it or expects it, but we like to kind of give each other like small tokens of appreciation, you know, other than each other's bodies. Um, and I couldn't really do that because I was kind of like stuffing, you know, as little as I could just so I could kind of keep costs down because I didn't really have money to save up for this trip. But anyways, um, that didn't matter and neither did the fact that my flight was delayed and I didn't land till like 3 in the morning. Uh, Scott running with comics is the one that kind of houses us all and makes this all possible. And um, uh, He was, you know, I can't say enough about the guy. He's just a saint. Um, he really just... He's just, he's awesome. He's like a really good friend. And, um, yeah, that's why I, uh, I don't know. It's, it's just great knowing him and, and the rest of the guys. Anyways, don't mean to get all emotional, but, uh, so I came in on a very early Thursday morning. We had a chill, very uh, chill morning because Scott was running on like three hours of sleep after being up for like 24 hours. Uh, and I was running on a little sleep as well. So we kind of chilled out, waited for a couple of the other guys to show up. Um, and once Nate and CJ kind of came into the picture, we figured, hey, why don't we hit up some thrift shops? So we did, uh, which is really awesome because I feel like um, that that was the group kind of like accommodating me. I mean, they're really big into uh, <laughs> crocodile teal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do feel something, Johnny. I, I swear I do. But with, when the lights and the camera on, I just it just seems so disingenuous. Um, probably because it's not... Probably because it's all scripted. I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, you guys really do mean a lot to me. And I don't know why I have this like big S-eating grin on my face. I, I'm just drinking water. I, I don't know what's happening. A uh, lot, lot of emotions, but... So, uh, yeah, so day one, I feel like they, they accommodated me since I'm not as big into comics uh, in recent history compared to, to those guys. Um, so we hit up a few thrift shops, Salvation Army, checked out some of those places because I really like to dig and, and see what's out there. And uh, I actually came away with some stuff, uh, some things that are kind of random and that I normally wouldn't pick up. Uh, but cool nonetheless. So I'm going to show what I was able to bring home with me. 
So first we hit up some like random thrift shop in the area. Was it random? I don't know. Anyways, it was a thrift shop. Might have been a Salvation Army. And uh, I just picked up some some things that like kind of appealed to me for some reason. Not necessarily things I was collecting, but here we go. So first off, I'll show you this like Ninja Turtles bandana thing right here. Why be a Crip or a Blood when you can be a turtle? Am I right? So this is actually an original 1990, it says over here, Mirage Studios. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cloth here. You got Leonardo saying, slap me three. Raphael, I have an attitude. Donatello, yo dude, and Mikey. Up, wake, hold on, I can't read backwards. Wake up and smell the pizza. So again, not really collecting like tablecloths or handkerchiefs, you know, things to blow my nose in, but it's an original kind of, you know, 90s nostalgia paraphernalia turtle thing. So for, I think it cost like 99 cents. So I was like, why not? Let's start off the trip with a bang, right? So really cool. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's around. Actually, maybe I should just... Oh, oh, Mother Teresa. <laughs> um, the not dead version. Anyways, so that's one of the first things I bought. And then I also picked up uh, this totally random book, Blockbuster, all-time favorite movies and music. So these are just, uh, you know, recommendations from the now pretty much defunct Blockbuster video. Uh, the reason I picked this, because there's actually some sentimental value here. It's not uh, it's not just a nostalgia trip. Um, I actually used to work at Blockbuster Video. It was my second job uh, when I was... Uh, did I start in high school? Yeah, I think I was actually a senior in high school when I started working at Blockbuster Video. And that's not the only reason why it's uh, it means something to me. But I actually met my now wife at Blockbuster Video. She... Uh, Things are about to get a little saucy here, but she was actually my assistant manager at uh, the location I worked at. So she technically like hired me, interviewed me, hired me. Um, it's not really as racy as it sounds. You know, we didn't have any encounters in the back room or anything like that. We uh, we actually weren't like into each other at first. We like we like liked each other as like friends and hung out and were buddies and stuff. But it wasn't like an instant like damn you know uh so i just thought that was cool again because block with blockbuster video is pretty much a dinosaur at this point i think there's only like one in alaska that's still going um and yeah i mean it's pretty much like a little symbol of my relationship with my wife which is going great i mean why else would i be up at nine o'clock doing a video live while she's out gallivanting at some bar because it's trivia night anyways uh so things are good i'm happily married and i also picked up again totally random things i haven't been collecting at all but do you guys remember sega pico probably not sega obviously the video game company came out with a uh, uh a video game system that was geared towards kids it was called pico they had these like storybook cartridges here. Uh, you would flip them over. It would have like a, you can kind of get a little, that's the Pico right there. So you would pop in the this tape that had pages. The pen would like recognize things. It would hook up to a TV. You could like draw on all kinds of stuff. So I had that uh, as a kid. And I remember we used to play like Richard Scarry's, uh, you know, Big Little World or whatever. And just to just draw all over things. Um, so they had these box games at the thrift store. This one is the Magic School Bus. This one is the Baron Stain Bears, not Baron Steen, uh, a school day. And then this one is just Magic Crayons. So I don't think I had these three as a kid, but just finding um, these was really cool because my brother and I were like talking about it recently. We're like, oh man, I wonder what a Pico goes for nowadays. Um, so again, just another shot of nostalgia. I don't know, 
like now I definitely want to hold on to these, uh, but they might end up being kind of like resale trade fodder down the line when I kind of lose interest in, in that uh, part of my childhood, I guess. But so here are the prices I paid though, right? So boxed games, these are 50 cents a piece. The book was probably like, I don't even know, let's say 50 cents as well. And then this, uh, this nice headgear was 99 cents. So the most expensive thing was this cloth. So right off the bat, uh, the first stop of the day, first stop of the trip came away some, with some really cool things. Again, added some variety to my collection, but were really awesome. And things that just, it, it made me happy to like buy and reminisce. And I like, I feel like that's why I do, like, is that why we do this stuff? Because it's like, I don't know. I think that's why I do it. It's like a connection to my childhood, kind of like a carefree time of no responsibilities. And, and uh, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm, you know, my parents did a great job of kind of like spoiling me. So I'm not like, oh, I always wanted this as a kid and now I don't have it. Um, you know, it's kind of like rebuying things. I, 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 I'm not making up for like my parents' lack of providing. It's just something... I don't know, just just to be a kid again, you know? Um, so that was great. Uh, let's see, do I collect He-Man? Not really. Um, I I never really got into He-Man, oddly enough. Um, my wife is big into, like, He-Man, or maybe more She-Ra. So, and I catch it from time to time, because I, I see things on the on the TV. And uh, I don't know, I never, like, I, like He-Man I never got into, G.I. Joe, I don't, I feel like... The more masculine the show, the less it appealed to me. Um, despite the fact that my body is overflowing with testosterone nowadays, I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm making a joke about the whole masculinity thing, but I, those ones just never really. Did I watch them? I must have. I mean, I remember all the like, you know, uh, like PSAs that GI Joe did, like oh and. and now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Um, so I must have watched them in some aspect, but it's not something that really stuck with me. Uh, Power Rangers, yes, I did like Power Rangers. Huh? I want to make sure I get all these. Did your wife know you were into toys when you first met? Uh, <laughs> all right, so let's go over here. Power Rangers, yes, I was into the original run of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in the 90s. Um, and I actually have some of that to show you in this video. Uh, did my wife know I was into toys? So... To be honest, when we met, I wasn't like as into toys as I am now. So this is kind of like a relatively recent development. I mean, I've always been into like, you know, the cartoons from from that era, the 80s, 90s, um, you know, superhero movies, that sort of thing. But when I first jumped onto YouTube, I was doing more of the comic side of things. Um, so this toy thing kind of evolved. I don't even know. I think it's like... I started to, I might have started to dig, dig up old toys or, or see things and um, kind of like how YouTube opened my eyes up to the world of comics uh, or like, you know, reinvigorated it. Uh, it probably did the same for toys, just seeing other people's collections. And then when I actually started to hunt for things and saw that, hey, I can actually get some of this stuff, uh, you know, if I'm patient enough or, you know, for relatively cheaply, um, then it really uh just re-engulfed into a full-fledged passion again. So, um, so my wife, like, I, I guess I kind of changed from who I, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it was all Johnny. Uh, he, he was the, the, uh, he is my muse in all things that I do. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, I mean, my wife jokes that, you know, I'm not the man she married, so hopefully, <laughs> uh, hopefully that is a joke and she's not at the bar right now cheating on me. All right. Uh, so moving on. <laughs> uh, so we hit up that one thrift shop. Then we went to another. Yeah, definitely, dude. Like, any, like seriously, anytime I'm down, I could literally just look behind me and be like, okay. Like, it, this does. This really just brings a smile to my face. Um, okay, so just moving on, we hit up a, uh, we definitely hit up another Salvation Army after that, and 
One of the things that I bought I don't have with me because since I traveled light, I didn't have uh, a, another bag to bring all my goodies home with me. So, you know, because I couldn't have taken more from Scott, I, I took one of his duffel bags as well. Uh, but it didn't fit this one item. So I'll show you the thing I got and then talk about the thing I didn't get. So at this um, Salvation Army, again, I picked up a random book from my childhood. Pokemon, the Trading Card Game Player's Guide. And my box for that's cancer free. There was that's all over. Sorry, I'm just trying to read comics as we go. Um, oh, Nerd Cave. I will respond to that in a second. Uh, I might actually be able to pull it out for you. So I picked up this Pokemon Trading Card Game Player's Guide. Uh, I definitely have an attachment to Pokemon. I was at a Toys R Us. If you guys remember what that was. Uh, I was at a Toys R Us when they were like first promoting Pokemon. There was a yellow VW Bug uh, Pikachu edition out in the parking lot that had Pokemon uh, playing in the back. This was like the first promotion of Pokemon before it even came out. And uh, like since then I was caught up in Pokemon Fever. Uh, uh, G, uh, I mean, I didn't really, yeah, Generation 1. I didn't really go beyond. Kind of red and blue. Dabbled in yellow for a little bit, but not like silver, gold, or, or anything after that. Um, and then I also got into the trading card game. So I remember like taking the bus to a card store uh, and just you know opening up you know packs and packs and packs of Pokemon cards. So this little player's guide uh, to teach you how to play the game was really cool. Um, I uh, I actually want to dig through it sometime. I feel like I did have this. Um, it's probably one of those unofficial kind of. Uh, uh, strategy ads here, but yep, yeah, yeah, book is not endorsed or authorized by Nintendo right there. Um, so just really cool. I got this for like 50 cents, uh, actually, maybe even 10 cents, uh, because it was really, uh, I, I got a student discount. Obviously, I'm not a student, um, but CJ is, so he had uh, his uh, little student ID and was able to hook me up. It was funny, like leading up to the checkout, we were like discussing, like, how are we gonna play this? Like, are you gonna you know are you gonna go first and whip out your ID or should I take like Scott's son up with me to the checkout and be like, oh he's a student this is my son so um, again I don't think Salvation Army would have cared at all I don't know why we were trying to think of this like diabolical scheme to save me like thirty three percent but uh, it worked anyways uh, so I am not I am not above that by any means. So the one thing, uh, the one other thing that I bought that I can't show you right now because it's actually with CJ. He's going to be acting as my transport as uh, he's expected to come to Bos Boston in August. Is uh, It was this laser tag set. Um, the brand name was Laser Challenge. Do you guys remember? It was, uh, it was called the Patrol Set. And it came with uh, a little gray laser tag gun and a gray little vest. So... It was actually the, the set that I had growing up. Uh, it came out in the 90s. I think it was put up by Toy Max. And um, it was boxed. So it had like all the instructions, the box. I actually still have my set from when I was a kid. Um, or one of them. But I don't have the box. So I saw it. I was like, this is really cool. It was priced at $14.99. And I was like, wow, this is like the most expensive thing in here. This is Again, this is Salvation Army. Um... So, it's just like, really? Like, I feel like that, that happens to me all the time. Like, I finally find things too, like, I, I, places that are supposed to be cheap thrift stores, and it always ends up being like the most expensive thing there. So, $14.99, I was like on the fence. I was like, that's kind of, eh, that's kind of a lot, especially just for a box, right? Uh, or at least, um, I mean, it came with everything, but for me, it's, it's an upgrade to just have the box. And, uh, but with, CJ's student discount it ended up being like 10 bucks which is a lot more you know easier to stomach there was a second uh box set I did toy with the idea of buying it um but then I was like do I really need two probably not um I even tried to like coax Scott into like hey does your kid need it because I'll buy it for him <laughs> uh when really I just wanted somebody to play with <laughs> Uh, let's see. I have a lot of those found on the dino. Oh, awesome. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm trying to, like, talk and kind of read your comments at the same time. It's not... It's kind of hard for me to do sometimes. Um, I get overwhelmed. 
anyways, so I'm just gonna keep moving along. Um, so that was that was day one. We hit up thrift shops. Things were really cool. Um, just digging around, seeing things. I saw other things, um, but they were either too expensive or I didn't need them. But again, the fact that I was buying things from thrift shops, which can be really hit or miss on day one, was really uh, just really set the tone for the trip. Again, not that like I equate my passion and desire to go meet the guys with like how much stuff I come home with, but it definitely adds to the enjoyment, right? Um, so that was day one. Then on Friday is when every was you know day one of Comic Con, but beforehand, Johnny arrived. We all were there. Um, so again it's kind of been tradition where we all kind of exchange gifts uh again i feel a little scummy that i didn't really have anything for anybody um you know i, I did help contribute to a kind of a bigger gift for scott himself but i didn't come with anything for other people um i guess i'm gonna i'm gonna blame the uh you know the spirit airlines bag policy where you know, it would have cost me like $60 to... Anyways, okay, I'm sounding like an idiot. Anyways, they know that I care about them. And yeah, so anyways, they were super awesome. We don't give to get and all that sort of stuff. So I'll start with Scott because he always like is amazing and just like really selfless and generous when it comes to the group. Um, so first off, he came away with this like... He gave this like really custom... He just like totally unlocked this side of himself, which I had no idea about. He's he's like he's like a legit artist. And uh he he drew on this rock for me and did the one of the coolest things, right? Uh just combining the Autobot and Decepticon logos into one piece right there. So again, it's it's original. Like he took the time. It's a showcase of his um you know his abilities which was i mean now that i know it i'm just going to commission him to do things for me all the time mostly self well, you know mostly portraits of this uh starting a little collection there and uh so that was really cool because again he you know it shows that he knows about me about the things i'm passionate about he took the time to handcraft this found a really cool rock wrote you know motor city comic on 2018 on the back so that was actually really super awesome and thoughtful uh, I'm actually going to put it right behind me on my shelf here forever and ever. Because, you know, rocks ain't going anywhere. Um, and then he kind of just uh, bought a bunch of other things, which kind of allude to my interest as well. Bought a Spider-Man pop right there for me. Spider-Man is obviously one of my... I shouldn't say obviously because I probably never talk about comics on my channel anymore. But Spider-Man's really cool. Uh, one of my favorite characters. One of the few runs which I was actually reading, you know, from the beginning in those uh, collected trades to kind of get the story of all that. Um, and going along with Spider-Man, he bought this Spider-Man Golden Book, which I thought was really neat. I didn't even know they still made Golden Books. Uh, obviously, I know Golden Books from when I was a kid. Um, so just uh, this is, again, another great mashup of a character that I think is super awesome. And they're just kind of that link to nostalgia right there. So we got The Amazing Spider-Man Trapped by the Green Goblin in Golden Book form. Then he bought this uh, really random and cool book. Uh, it's called, it's, I think it's by 50 Cent. I don't think it's uh, 50 Cent in the title. Let me actually, let me just check on that. Ta -da -ta -ta -ta. I'm loving it. Okay, so the book is called Playground. Yeah, okay, so 50 Cent wrote this, the rapper. Uh, it's called Playground. It's the mostly true story of a former bully. Um, this is an allusion to the fact that I've actually met 50 Cent. I think it is. Uh, I could be making that up. Pretty sure Scott knows that. That profile picture, right? Yeah. So uh, I actually met 50 Cent. He was doing like a liquor store signing uh, in my town, which and, and where I live is like nowhere. So the fact that like, come see 50 Cent at the liquor store and get a bottle of vodka was like totally random. Um... But, you know, it's what better way to spend a Saturday afternoon than waiting three hours to, to meet a, you know, kind of a retired rapper. But anyways, it was really fun. I did that. That was actually a really eventful event because, like, 
it was like super hot. People were waiting outside. People were like fighting in the parking lot. People were passing out um, from heat exhaustion. It was uh, pretty much everything you could ask for. Um, so that was cool. And again, just shows how much like Scott like pays attention to people he cares about. Um, and then he also gave me this book right here, this comic, Batman Shadow of the Bat, number 46. And the significance here is that my wife is kind of randomly, I don't know if it's random, but she's a really big history buff, history nerd. And like Honest Abe here is like one of her biggest. So um, fans, she actually has a, a tattoo of him. Uh, I won't tell you where. <laughs> Um, let's play Where's Abe? No, um, so, so he got that because it's kind of like an olive branch. No, nah, I'm just making that up, but it's like, oh, thank you for letting me borrow your husband. Um, but no matter what you guys do, she still thinks you're all internet weirdos. So, anyways, again, really cool, super thoughtful. Uh, I wish I was half the man Scott is, blah, blah, blah. Uh, awesome things there. And then I'll just show you. All right, take a deep breath. <gasps> All right, it began. All right, so that's the stuff Scott gave me. Um, and then the, also the other guys came through as well. I'm just grabbing what's close to me. Uh, CJ, speaking of Power Rangers, gave me these two beauties. The original uh, Mighty Morphin Power Ranger figures. The, what are these, 12 inches, 10 inches? Um, these guys are in the box. I don't think it's sealed. Not that it matters, but we got the Red Ranger and the Blue Ranger right there. So, again, CJ, um, this really, like, kickstarts my Power Ranger collection because it's something that I really didn't, um, didn't really know how I wanted to approach. Like I said, I was a fan of the show itself. Um, all right, Billy. Um, so I was a fan of the show itself. And I did have some of the figures. I don't remember these big guys. I remember having the ones that kind of like morphed where their like heads would flip from like, you know, non-helmet form to helmet form. I definitely had those. Um, I don't think I had, I don't recall having anything else, but I have a pretty bad memory. So um, again, this really kickstarts my uh, kind of recollection of these guys. They're awesome. Just the figures alone are great but like the packaging on like any of these products is just like really just really is is awesome it's almost like uh you know a collection in itself and just really adds to like kind of brings back the feel of, of getting it brand new just being like oh you're holding the box in your hand you know so this is really cool um i still gotta figure out what i want to do with uh power rangers oh green ranger and white ranger awesome great finds um I still want to figure out how far I want to go. I definitely want to get the rest of the Rangers like in this size. Um, I have the original Megazord. He's missing his sword. If if I come upon it cheap enough, I do want like the Dragon Zord. Uh, yeah, Dragon Zord. I'll do Deluxe Megazord. Um, the kind of like playset that CJ just got of like the you know where Zordon is. Like that would be really cool if I can get it cheap enough or find it somewhere. Um, I don't really know what I want to do with like the bad guys. Um, I guess I'm not as attached to them, right? I mean, I, I want some of the, um, no, the, these aren't the talking ones. These are like the first, this is the first run. They're just figures. They have like weapons, um, you know, and with this big, but they don't actually talk or anything. So, uh, for bad guys, I don't know. Did they, did they ever make a Rita doll? I don't feel like they didn't. Um, like I would do Rita, some putties maybe. And then it kind of gets a little fuzzy, right? Like, do I want, like, Goldar? Like, um, I know CJ was promoting that, like, Igor guy just because he looks cool. But I don't know. I uh, It might be something where I have to kind of, like, watch the first season again or something to see, like, what would I really want. Or if I come upon it cheaply enough, who cares? But it's not something I'm going to be chasing necessarily. So at the very least, I want the Rangers. I want... Okay, so they did make a Rita figure. Um, I think I watched it through to, like, when Zed came around. That, that, probably, that was probably that was probably like only like the second season. Um, I saw the movie. I remember that it had the killer soundtrack, which I will uh, demonstrate for you right now. <clears throat> Sing along with me if you know the words. Uh oh, 
We're in trouble. Something's come along and it's bust our bubble. Yeah, yeah, uh-oh. We're in trouble. Um, so I think I actually bought the soundtrack just for that song. You know, I wonder if it's on Spotify. I'm going to I'm gonna look it up right after this video. So thank you, CJ. Thank you, Scott, if I didn't say that already. It's hard to get back up. Whoa. Okay. Um, so Johnny came through with some really cool mixed bag of like uh, 80s, early 90s toys right here. Um, one of them, which I definitely did not have, and it's the start of a collection again, is Captain Power. Um, this was really cool. It's It's one of those lines where... I don't, the only thing I remember about Captain Power is that interactive VHS thing that they had going on. So you would pop in like a VHS tape. It would interact with some of the toys where like, I don't know if it was like, like light from the TV, like would hit the toys in a certain way. Um, and it would cause them to do things, right? So there were some like spaceships where you can like shoot at the TV and shoot at targets and it would actually like, keep score or take damage uh and if like your ship took damage enough it would like eject one of these guys like out of the cockpit um and then there were some other like uh energy power shield kind of things where i think it would just make like the play set like light up and make it seem like these guys were getting like a battery charge or something so that's kind of like my recollection of captain power so as far as like what i want from the set would obviously be captain power thank you very much um and then that interactive kind of uh thing with the vhs um i actually had the chance to get like that ship like one of the black ships and uh that power changing thing but i kind of balked at it it wasn't a bad price from what i could see and there were some boxes involved but again i was still trying to like figure out where i wanted to go with that collection um and it was a little far of a drive. So I was like, oh, I'll just let it go. Um, so kind of regretting it now, but it's all right. So there's Captain Power. Then we got this Ninja Turtle figure. We, uh, <laughs> we're trying to figure out, this is like a mystery right here. So if you, for those of you that know turtles, you know that something's a little off, right? So he has Leonardo's bandana. But then if you look at the rest of him, he kind of has purple, you know, armbands and wristbands and knee pads, right? So that would scream Donatello. So you're like, all right, maybe this is some kind of knockoff. But if you look at it, like, under his feet, he has the right branding. I'm, I'm going to try to read it, but it's kind of, like, really small. Uh, it says Playmates Mirage Studios, like, 2003, right? So that's all legit. So what I, my theory, and I've been and I've been doing a lot of research on this, with my tinfoil hat on. Uh, my theory is here is that whoever had this figure... Yes! Exactly! Donnie with Leo's head. Nerd Cave, you got it. We're on the same wavelength here. We're, we're like uh, Mulder and Scully. You know, we, uh, we saw... The truth is out there. Uh, so that's, that's my theory. Uh, I just got somebody else to kind of think about that. Because if you look at his head, which... Um, I'm obviously not going to de decapitate him, but it is easy to pop off and on. So that's, uh, it's cool, man. Johnny, you got me a custom. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to gently put him down, although he's obviously been through a lot. Um, all right. Then we'll throw in some Transformers. We got this guy here. Um... God, I'm going to fail all of you. I want to say it's like Chase. He's one of the throttle bots. So like if you transformed him and pulled him back, he would go like vroom, all on his own. So that's Chase right there. Um, And then this guy is obviously Blitzwing. One of the triple changers. Really love the triple changers. I love that idea. Uh, actually, in the cartoon, there was a really cool episode with Blitzwing where he, I think it was Blitzwing, where he like he arrived on some planet. I think it was a different planet, but they were still humans. But it was like an ancient like Mayan culture, and they worshipped him as like a god. So that was really cool. That was like that was one of my one of the episodes I remember. Um, let's see. Speaking of turtles, I found the history Teenage Mutant Turtles 
of Leonardo box set that comes eight different Leonardo's. Ah, oh, nice, dude. Eight Leonardo's. Oh, the history of Leonardo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for twenty dollars, that's awesome. I don't remember what retail was, but I gotta think it was more than that, right? Uh, I'm gonna say like a hundred, right? Um, so Blitzwing, actually a really cool character from the cartoon. I love that episode. Triple Changers is really awesome. Triple Changers and like combiners were like my thing when it came to Transformers. I was just like really impressed with that, and I just love the idea. Um, then we got Trailbreaker here. This has always been actually his looks. His chrome looks really nice on his legs here. So a lot of these, uh, I shouldn't say a lot. Some of these I do have, but I'm always looking for ways to improve uh, my collection. I'm getting more brave when it comes to the toys and kind of like rebuilding them. So I can definitely see, uh, you know, being able to uh, strip some of these down for parts and, and just upgrade things, which is which is always good because you want to get those those bargain prices that kind of uh, go along with played with figures that you find out in, you know, flea markets and thrift shops. Um, but you're, you know, you're always looking to, to improve them and make them a little more shiny. So I think this will go a long way in, in helping kind of up the polish of my game here. Uh, and then at the very, uh, at the very end, uh, is a little, my little pony. So cute. Is it Twilight Sparkle or, uh, <laughs> Rainbow Dash? Neither, right? Uh, ah. Well, she's dead now, so she's glue. <clears throat> All right. Uh, yeah, so uh, she has a... Well, she's... The light kind of makes it super bright and washed out. But she has like a crescent moon and two stars. So yeah, Johnny, if there's any bronies out there, tell me in the comments. Um, definitely an original as far as I know. Yep, 1984 Hasbro. So really cool there. Um... My daughters are obviously all about My Little Pony and unicorns and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't, I don't collect them, but just having them is cool and just kind of being able to be like, eh, "You girls can't play with this." Is always good. Basically, always looking for reasons to um, make my kids hate me. So this will go a long way in doing that. So thank you. I'm gonna put them right here next to Slimer and in front of Stay Puft. All right, so thank you, Johnny. Thank you so much for that. Uh, really, really cool kind of mishmash of uh, kind of like the whole era that we're all about. Um, so that concludes the gift portion of uh, my little trip. So now we can actually go to Comic-Con and show you what I bought. So again, I was balling on a budget, didn't have too much. I kind of, I usually always have kind of like a target of like 200 bucks total when I go to conventions. Um, and this time around, I wasn't planning on it originally, but I did get a commission, commissioned. Uh, it was by Rob Gilroy, the artist from Chew. Um, can you see it? No, okay, you can't see it in my camera shot here, but I actually have, I've actually gotten something from him before, uh, when he was in Boston in 2013. So I already got a commission from him, but I had another idea, which I thought would be really cool. Um, and it's kind of funny how things played out because I'll show you down the line. I got something else that's related to this commission. Um, so I got him, he does nine by twelves for a hundred dollars. So, you know, boom, right there, there goes half of my non-existent budget anyways. But I figured at the very least I can get that. And, you know, if I strike out the rest of the con, totally fine. Right. So I will show you. I got actually. Does anybody recognize this character? Waiting in the comments. Come on. Okay, anyways, I'm just going to go on. <laughs> it is from Space Ghost, but it's not Space Ghost. Um, so, uh, yeah, so this is... I told him, I was like, hey, I really like Space Ghost, Coast to Coast. Mortal, you're closer. It's not Brack, though. Uh, I was like, hey, I really like Space Ghost, Coast to Coast. Like, I'll give you two options. Can you do either Brack that you just mentioned or da -da -da -da, Zorak? Uh, and he came back and he's like, oh, you know, I, I love the show. I'm actually a fan, too. So um, he went with it. I didn't know what he was going to do until I saw it. And 
that's what he came away with. So I think he did a really, really awesome job. This is I'm definitely going to be proud to throw this on my wall. Um, he definitely looks like more of like an angry Zorak. Uh, I was kind of looking... Um, no, he. I guess in the show, it's in the show he was a little more passive, kind of peaceful, looking. Anyways, not uh, as aggressive. I mean, he was definitely aggressive. Don't get me wrong, but this is definitely kind of like a nastier looking Zorak. But yeah, he told me he's like, I just felt like drawing a bug. I was like, okay, that's <laughs> that works for me. So definitely, uh, actually, really happy with this. I'm gonna get it framed and added to my collection here. Um, uh, that being said, I do think I'm going to take a break from kind of larger commissions, partly because I don't want to blow, uh, you know, a lot of my budget all in one swoop, unless, again, it's kind of like a must-have or a new face to add to the collection. Um, but I kind of, part of the reason was I saw what um, Nate and... Excuse me, I think I spent more time with you digging yeah, no, this year was this year was great. Um, I was just I'm replying to Johnny's comment. We, uh, I felt I felt kind of bad last year. You know, Johnny was like on a kind of a condensed schedule. He could only be there for a day, and like we blew like half the first day waiting for Dave Gibbons, which was an amazing experience. But you know, you kind of lost that time that we could all have to hang on, and interact a little bit. So I, I always felt badly about that. Um, so this time I was I was happy that we all had multiple days to be with each other, and that we could share. Uh, our crossover interest. There was, um, I, I feel like I kind of pulled some of the guys away from comics a little bit. Um, so they got to play with me as I looked for toys. So, and, uh, and then like Nate and, and uh, Scott, like just totally like went off the rails and started collecting VHS tapes. Uh, one of you brought up VHS tapes a while ago. If you want to see that, check out Scott's video. Um, yeah, they went crazy with VHS tapes. I don't know if Nate's gonna show his on YouTube, but they uh like if if you're a VHS collector, definitely check out their videos if if Nate makes one. And uh, it's just a great time, right, to be a VHS collector because it's so cheap and readily available. And uh, we actually like they bought a VCR. One of the nights we started watching VHS tapes, and at first I was like, that's kind of silly. Like, why would you like? downgrade in quality from like blu-ray to vhs but again there's just something about popping in a tape rewinding it adjusting the tracking and just like the look and feel of it um <laughs> retro i think you just want you love my singing voice huh uh, i'll see if i can bust it out for you um but yeah just like again just kind of like it's almost like a time capsule or a time machine right just bring us back to those times of like um, just that there was such a source of, uh, joy for me anyways. I know not everyone has, you know, great memories or attachment to their childhood, but it really is just like an easy way to kind of get yourself back in that zone and mindset. And actually, you know, once I, we started watching, like, uh, they watched the Hobbit on VHS and then we started getting into Clue the movie, which I love. Um, and just like being able to watch that, I was like, okay, I get it now. Like, this is actually really cool. So, uh, yeah, if you want that, I didn't buy any. I wasn't lugging home a VCR on the plane. But so this is my commission from Rob Gilroy. And then while I was with him, <clears throat> I also got him to sign this uh, just random like mini mates. Um, it was, uh, I think I did, Johnny. I didn't uh, I didn't um, scrub through all the footage yet, but I'm pretty sure that's in there. Um, oh God, I hope it is, right? Uh, that was funny. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. <sighs> I'll just have to remember if it's not. Um, but so I got, oh, that's awesome, Retro. Um, so I got this, uh, Chew Little Mini Mates playset, uh, figures right here. Uh, I got it signed by Rob. I just thought that was kind of a neat thing that maybe he doesn't get shoved in front of his face a lot. Uh, I wasn't planning on it, on getting it, but when I was looking for a comic that I wanted him to sign, I just happened to stumble upon this, so I figured I'd bring it with me, small enough. Uh, and then the thing, uh, the comic I actually did get him signed was the Chu Revival crossover issue. Those two, this was like the height of my, I'll show you, I actually have 
signatures from the Revival creative team. I got Tim Seeley, Mike Norton, and uh, Jenny Friesen, who was a, the cover artist on a lot. Uh, oh, man, Big Bean, what's going on, buddy? You, uh, Yeah, I took a little bit of a break, but I've been, I've been putting out videos for a little bit, so you got some homework to do. Um, so anyways, I, pretty, I almost got everyone on this issue signed. Uh, I'm only missing like John Lehman, uh, who was a writer for Chu. Con a few years back, but I forgot to bring that issue. Uh, and then last but not least with Rob, I picked up his Ashcan edition of uh, his new book that's going to be coming out called Farmhand. Um, I really don't know much about this book. Uh, Nate kind of gave me a quick little synopsis where it's like a farm where they grow body parts. So it sounds like totally right up the like the kind of the same oddball kind of oddities sense of humor or world that they created with Chew. So this might be something where I'll have to actually pick up monthly, which is kind of a massive achievement. I mean, I don't even know when the last time I've been into a comic book shop is... Um, an isolated one, not like, you know, I've been to Newberry Comics and stuff, which sells a little bit of everything, but but I wanted to pick that up because uh, he is one of my favorite creators and want to support him because you can just tell by the way he, he talks on Twitter that he's like, he's actually like really passionate about this. So hopefully we'll get to see where the story goes. Uh, Steven Armel. Oh, awesome. Cool. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think he had like a pretty big line when we walked by him on saturday um i didn't i didn't i didn't meet any media guests i know scott wanted to meet wallace i'm blanking all his sean scott wallace sean sean wallace the uh princess bride guy you know inconceivable wow that was a terrible impersonation that was like a comic book guy from the simpsons worst impression ever um so scott got to meet him I'm usually not big into media guests anyways, um, so that's not a weird thing for me. Uh, I do like to kind of like people gaze, you know, we'll walk by, but oh, hey, that's that's better than this person. Um, thanks, buddy. I uh, appreciate it. Thanks for subscribing. Um, so, yeah, Motor City didn't really draw me to any of the celebrities there, um, other than in passing. Although that being said, <laughs> I'm probably going to, drop like a hundred dollars to meet Pee Wee Herman in, in Boston Comic Con. So my priorities are all screwed up. Um but I mean I'm kind of a fan. Oh while he's here, let's pull his string. I know you were, but where am I? <laughs> um that's a little sneak peek by the way. I haven't shown him in a video yet. That was a, a flea market purchase. Sealed in box. Sealed in box. Uh, got a pretty decent deal on it, too. So that was uh, that was my little run-in with Artist Alley. So now we're going to keep moving on to my purchases. Um, the next stuff I all got from the same vendor. So from my uh, toy perspective, there was only one guy that really had a good selection of things I care about uh, for decent enough prices. So I had to my so this time around I was only able to go Friday and Saturday. Last time I went the entire weekend. The reason why I had to cut it short was because I had to come back here on Sunday because um <laughs> uh I had to come back on Sunday because I was actually setting up at a toy show as a vendor for the very first time. My buddy and I were trying to get rid of our kind of like excess stuff that we didn't want in our collection um or you know if we bought like a lot you know we would grab what we needed and save the rest so that was kind of accumulating so uh i had to cut the trip short and leave on saturday which kind of neutered me in a way because you know i'm all about trying to get a deal and haggling and you know a big comic-con strategy is to wait till sunday if you can uh, and see if you can swoop in there especially if things haven't um you know, have kind of been laying dormant there. So I, uh, I was kind of, I'll tell you after I show you what I got and what I paid for, because I was kind of like kicking myself. I was like, oh man, uh, like this just feels wrong. I feel like I'm paying too much. Like who buys things on Fridays? Like this isn't me. But um, 
I so it was a little bit of a sense of desperation in terms of like I have to buy something, uh, a little remorse. But I think overall I'm okay with how things worked out. So I'm just gonna grab like a pile of stuff here and kind of show you. Mm, I'm gonna end up dropping it. So the very first thing I bought was this little Thundercats figure. I um. I don't remember the kids' names. I know I want them. Uh, but this one, it's not like the original toy. It's, he's kind of on a platform standing here. So I don't know what his deal is. Um, but it is, uh, you know, from the 80s. It's like 1984 or 85, Telepin, LJN. So, Kid and Cat. <laughs> is that true or is that like a joke? Like... You know, Kit Kat candy? I don't know. I'll take your word for it. Um, so this is one of them, right? I found him in like a random kind of like toy bin digging around. The guy originally wanted, I mean, the guy originally wanted $3 for him. Right off the bat, I was like, I want this for a dollar. But again, it was like literally like a half an hour into Comic-Con. So he was like, no, I'll do two. And I was like, fine, whatever. In case I don't come away with anything else, I came away with this, right? So he's seen better days. I think it was like, fingers are kind of like chewed off paint damage whatever um but for two dollars i will definitely grab him i do not have him in any form whatsoever so that was uh the one thing i liked from that guy let's see next year i want to try a saturday con um saturdays are crazy uh overall no matter what convention you go to um <laughs> uh, i know johnny you're, i feel oh man i wish uh yeah. I wish you ended up with that Freddy too, buddy. You'll get you'll get another chance. You definitely will. Um or, you know, maybe I'll find it and you'll have a surprise waiting for you next year. Uh anyways, <laughs> you don't suck. Um Oh, Saturdays, that's right. Um Oh, the Freddy he was talking about was like Johnny, you do you remember the name of it? It was like it was like a Barbie doll in a way. It's like a, he started off as a normal person and then you like dropped his uh, Freddy face on him or um, you know, like something like that. It was like Manic FX or something. Uh, yeah, okay. There we go. Max FX. Um, again, the funny thing was at that toy show I went to. So I've never seen this figure before in my life. But at that toy show that I went to the next day, I saw him there too. Uh, right around the same asking price. I, at Comic Con, they were asking thirty. Uh, at the toy show, they're asking twenty-five. The the toy show one, the box is more beat up. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's always tough. I yeah, I've, I've definitely kind of held myself back on buying things before. And uh, what did you miss? Me me rambling for like fifty-three minutes. Comic lover. Uh, but these live shows are just easier. I, I tried to do a, like a produced one, and I was like, oh. <laughs> um, anyways, so yeah, Saturdays are crazy. I don't know if you're gonna like Saturdays better than uh, Sunday. I prefer Sunday because it's more low key, and like I said, it's the last day, so you might run into some desperate vendors that are just trying to offload some stuff. Um, but Saturdays, like, yeah, there's a lot going on. So it's it's I guess it's what you want out of a convention. I think they're a little too crowded for my liking on Saturday. So anyways, that Thundercats figure was just from one guy, my first purchase. Everything else I'm about to show you was from all the same vendor. Um, so if that was Kit or Cat, I ended up randomly finding the other part of it. I can't tell. Not sure if he's in focus or not. I know I'm in focus, so I just put him against my face. Um, so here's the other guy right here. Again, same thing. Not the original figure, but uh, this flat platform here. Uh, I went to Motor City Comic Con in Michigan. Uh, you know, kind of like the annual tradition, meeting up with the posse. So I found him. He was originally priced at three dollars. So just kind of, I'm not going to whip out a calculator, but if you want to do mental math. Asking price on him was three dollars. Um, then I picked up the Panache Place Witch 
from Thunder Voltron. Sorry, from Voltron. I don't really have any Panache Place uh, figures. I believe she came with an accessory. I don't have that, but this one again, asking price was three dollars. So I was kind of picking the the lighter ones because other things were too high priced. Hagar, very nice. That was in my head, but I was kind of doubting myself for some reason. Um, so I wanted to pick her up because I don't have her and it's a lower priced figure. So I was trying to accumulate quantity over quality, I guess I would say. So there we go. The first originals we got. I sold all my Thundercats. Aw, oh, man. I think the original Wild Cat were add-ons with other figures. I think you're right about that, actually, too. So I picked up Hagar, the witch. Um, then... Going back to Thundercats for a second, I got the Mail Away Mumra figure, which I already had, but I did not have the staff. So now I have a complete Mail Away Mumra figure and also an extra body. So um, I don't know what the body itself is going to be worth, but I'll use that just to sell a trade, kind of recoup my investment. So original asking price on this was 12 so it was a little higher and some of the other stuff. But I figured for what he had there, you know, what I wanted, when it was worth it. And I think as far as my experience, as far as trying to track down that figure, it was the cheapest um, option I've had in a while. Uh, and then I picked up some Transformers. Uh, I'm totally going to... Well, I know this guy, so I'll show him right here. We got Octane. Speaking of triple changers... Here's a Decepticon one. He turns into like a gas tanker and um, some other thing. So uh, asking price on this one was $8 um, because he is missing a wheel down here. I mean, he doesn't have his accessories or anything. But the reason why I picked him up and I was kind of on the fence about it was because I already actually have an Octane body, which I haven't shown yet because... It's from an older video. Um, but I grabbed Octane here. And I should be able to do a transplant. So I'll either... He's kind of made in a funny way where I really wish they just screwed in the wheels. But it looks like they, they are screws, but they're not. There's not a way to pull them off from the outside. So what ended up might being the easier route is either transporting his little wings siding here to my other figure. Or... Um, or moving like the legs or something. But either way, between this figure and the one I picked up for a dollar, um, I will have the body of Octane. So basically I'll be like, it'll be a $9 investment after the transplant, which is still pretty good. That's what I try to do with um, with the with G G1 figures. If they're like regular size guys like these, I, I try to keep them at $10 or less uh, for what I'm paying for them, you know, intact. Uh, then obviously the mini bots and stuff. I'm like, you know, seven at the most potentially, depending on who it is. So I got him. So that'd be cool to to fix up my other figure. Um, and then I picked up some of the. I think these are the Terror Cons. Um, I, they 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 should form Abominus if I remember. So I picked up a couple of these guys. I already have. Um, if I'm if I'm not getting my combiners mixed up, I already have Ripper Snapper and Hunger. So I got these two. Um, and then I got to get one more. And then I think I have enough for the combiner. I have some of the combiner pieces. Um, so anyways, uh, I'm trying to remember the asking prices on these. I think it might have been like 5 and $6 respectively. Um, so keep that in mind. And then, oh, where did you guys go? Peekaboo! Um, oh man, my iPhone like made everything yellow. <laughs> Sorry, Ooh, cursing. cursing. Um, anyways, so the next thing is the last thing I got. Hey, neurotransmissions. Why is my brain feeling this way? <laughs> God, little bobcat in there for you. Um, okay, this doesn't want to. I'm gonna have to wash this again. This is like sweaty. Oh, oh I'm wiping my. <laughs> I'm wiping my sweat off with nostalgia. Um, so this is going to be the big purchase at the booth, probably my, other than the commission, my most expensive item. 
So you know how I mentioned I like Space Ghost Coast to Coast? So they actually made an action figure line. Um, you might have seen some of it in some other videos or pictures on Instagram. So I have Moltar. I have Zorak. I have Space Ghost, all loose. I also have a sealed Moltar. Um, but then I came to this guy's booth, and he had, like, a sealed Zorak, a sealed Brack, a sealed Space Ghost. So... I went with Brack, because I don't have him, right? And there he is. So for you guys that were talking about Brack earlier, that's it right there. That's what he looks like. So that's that's the alternative I gave to uh, Rob Gilroy. He could have um, drawn either him or Zorak. I mean, couldn't have gone wrong either way, right? So, Brack. Um... This is one of those things where I wish I was there on Sunday because, like I said, he had all of them. It's such a niche thing, the the show and the figures, that I really don't think... Ah, oh, Nerd Cave, I hate when that happens. That's terrible. <laughs> um, I did watch the Brack show, by the way, whoever mentioned that. I did. I, did. I actually did like that. That was pretty funny, too. Um... I passed on a Brack Show action figure set a while back at a thrift shop. So anyways, I wish I was there on Sunday because I feel like this would have sat around just because it's such a niche thing. Um, I don't know how many people would have been after it. And, uh, you know, that I would have had a little more leverage in the negotiating. But so but the asking price was $40. And if you look online, like on eBay, it's probably one of the cheaper ways to get it um christian bale scarecrow figure nice um are you happy with that haul or are you kind of disappointed um so oh yeah i'll mention those in a second johnny too so anyways asking prices is 40 i looked on ebay like everything on ebay was selling for like 60 at least so i was like you know it's already not too bad um I might as well make a run for it, right? So, um, anyways, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm getting flustered here for some reason. Um, so, anyways, everything I just showed you, right, added up to, like, $102 asking price. Originally, I just went up to him with the Transformers, and I was like, hey, um, I think it was, like, 60 Closer to like 70 bucks for like all the Transformers I brought up to him. All the figures. And I was like, oh, hey, would you take like 40 for it or something? And he's like, oh, no, no, I can't do that. He's like, I could do like... Um, I mean, I was... <laughs> sorry, I'm like forgetting what the... Basically, I, then I at that point, I tried to throw in Brack. And I was like, would you do... You know, if I threw in Brack, would you do this? And we settled on $85 for the Brack figure... And all the toys I just showed you. I feel like I'm missing something, but maybe not. Oh, I am missing something. Hold on. It's in my uh, display case over here. Ta -da -ta -ta, ta -da -ta -ta -ta. Boom, boom. Da -da -da -ba. Gotta catch them all, Pokemon. All right. Um, all right. So, um, before you get too excited, I didn't buy the entire guy at this Comic Con. This is obviously Voltron. This is like for you Voltron heads out there. This is like the the good one. <laughs> uh, Nineteen eighty one C Y and K made in Japan G B thirty six like the one of the more popular versions for Voltron collectors. So all the other lions, I had all but one lion. Um, all, everything else came from a collection from a YouTuber actually that uh, um, he gave me first dibs as, as far as like buying his childhood collection. Uh, the Space Baby, I'll give you a shout out. I don't think you really make videos anymore, but um, I might as well give you your, your, your dues. So he gave me, again, he gave me first dibs on his collection. Uh, I did pay for it. It's not like he gave it away. That would be crazy. Um, so I think we're both happy with how that turned out. So he gave me everything here except one leg. 
that being the blue one. And that's what I also picked up from this vendor. So now I have a Voltron that can stand on his own. He's not complete. Uh, you know, he's missing his weapon. The black line is a little busted. He's missing a, you know, a horn here that's broken. Um, actually, this lion is a knockoff version, the black one. I do have the original black lion, but he's in worse shape. Um, and he, like one of his arms or, or shoulders are so busted that you can't even uh, attach a lion into it. So for now, I'm just using this as a placeholder. Although this came out, out at the same time as all these figures. So it's not like a bootleg, bootleg, you know, it's not a Bobo of uh, Voltron. But anyway, so I finally got the other leg. Now I'm excited because he can stand up on his own. Um, and that added to the price. So if you guys were doing the math at home, we're like, wait, that's a terrible deal. Those numbers don't add up. The reason why uh, is because this line itself, he was asking for $25 for. So again, one of those things, had I been a little more patient, maybe I would have been able to find a better deal. Um, but it's one of those things like you're so close to like, I wanted a Voltron that could stand on his own. You know, I was too busy of having him kind of seated, kind of like sadly in the corner of my display case so uh again 25 was pretty much retail i'm not you know too broken up about it but the way i look at it i paid 85 dollars for all that stuff that i paid for so i pretty much knocked like five dollars off brack so that was a 35 dollar figure let's knock off five dollars of the lion that was like you know a 20 dollar figure and then the rest of the guys you know a couple bucks here or there but again you know, like I said, some of them were three dollars to begin with. Some are five, six. Um, it was only the, you know, octane that was eight, and the mummy that was twelve. That was a few more bucks. So when you break it down, it's really not that bad a deal, uh, especially for day one of Comic Con. And I kind of felt better about it once I really thought about what I got and what I paid for. Because at the time, I was really kicking myself. I was a, pretty much just blew all my money and, uh, uh, you know, came away with what? So I felt like I was being very non-Greco-Fabulous-like. Um, but I'm good. I'm good now. I'm in a, I'm in a better place. All right, so I'm going to put him back. Talks amongst yourselves. sure he doesn't fall over in the middle of it. Hey, everything is good. Oh, uh, somebody, one of you guys mentioned Sailor Moon. Yeah, I got a, the only knockoff is that Sailor Moon that's standing up on her own over there. The rest are legit. Those are all in boxes in the back there, the adventure dolls. Um, oh, these little mini figures are just cheap Chinese. Uh, little figures, but those are the ones I got the voice actresses to sign that somebody else alluded to earlier uh, Milk and cheese vinyl. Yes, that's <laughs> I'm gonna say that to the end because it's like in my closet <laughs> in, Over there. So let me just get through this. Okay um, This isn't Greco on demand. Okay, I'm not gonna dance for you guys Although I've already been singing and doing other things you've asked me to so I'll do anything for a view all right, so Comic-Con. Oh, I'm looking at my floor. Is that everything? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's what I bought at Comic-Con. Um, so, yeah, pretty much blew my budget day one. Day two, I uh, there wasn't really much left out there for me. I kicked the can on some uh, Pokemon, like, plush toys. And I was just like, I really need to start collecting stuffed animals. I mean, they were cheap. They were like two bucks a piece. I would have, you know, offered like a dollar. But then my wife would have been like, oh, you know, you brought home bed bugs and all this stuff. So she kind of has a weird thing with stuffed animals. Well, I shouldn't say weird because it's, it is possible. So unless you get those suckers, you know, throw them in the dryer you're gonna infest your house. Uh, not to make you guys all paranoid and all itchy. Um, so, yeah, though, so... I'll just wrap up that Comic-Con stuff. Uh, I left that Saturday night. Um, I had a really great time with everybody. It was It's really it's really awesome to be a part of this group. Um, 
not to like rub it in anybody's face, but um, I love how, how like, I, not that I'm like promoting like the internet or like internet relationships, but I just love that out of everything we've all gone through with YouTube, the good and the bad and the ugly, like what a great like shining beacon of like what this could be or like what, you know, you can actually find like like-minded people or just people like you would have never been exposed to before. And it just, it really makes the world smaller. It connects everybody. It's that you share the same passions with. And it's like, I don't know, like if I had gone my entire life, not knowing that these people existed, that, um, that I could really have like these awesome moments and experiences with and friendships with like, that's kind of a, a sad thought. And so it's really cool that, um, that I guess, you know, kind of what started off as a small little venture onto YouTube, like really brought about the fruits of, of all that. So it's really cool. You know, I love that the guys are making the trip. I'll try to, uh, uh, yeah, I really hope I can make this an annual thing. I know that, I, like I said, I kind of fight it. Uh, you know, I should take time off, but, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, Next time, if I'm gonna go for it, damn it, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna buy a legit airline, uh, spend you know a nice long time there, save up some money, you know, just go all crazy. But no matter how much time or how much money I have, the guys make it always worth it. And it's and it's super a lot of fun. Um, so uh, I did promise you guys, one of you, that I would show my milk and cheese vinyl figures. Um, if you can just hang tight for a second, hopefully I can dig it up real quick. But for now, you can kind of admire this. And if you have any questions, I'll be back in a second. I'm back. Well, that was quick, huh? So here's what he was talking about before, uh, milk and cheese. Again, um, for those of you that read comics in the 90s, you'll understand what this is. But uh, it was a comic book in the 90s by Evan Dorkin, what, you know, one of my favorite kind of like indie comic creators of the time. One of those things where I just, you know, as like a 12 year old kid, I stumbled into a comic shop, was uh, drawn to these characters. Uh, awesome sense of humor. Love that so much um, that Evan Dorgan brings. Him and like, and um, that other comic, Reed Fleming, World's Toughest Milkman, like totally random that I would stumble upon those, but I did and I just loved it. Uh, I thought those were always great. So this is uh, some vinyl figures that they made of the guys. Uh, and also, if you didn't notice, I have a commission right here. Um, you can kind of catch a little bit of it. That was... That's by Evan Dorkin. He was at Boston Comic Con 2015. Um, I <laughs> I spent a lot of time talking to him. I you know I usually try my best in Artist Alley, but you know fake until you make it kind of thing. Uh, but with him, it was definitely a genuine conversation. Uh, visited him multiple times. I actually ran to him right at the beginning of the con, and he like I don't think he was expecting anyone to like want to see him right away. He was like, oh, uh, I was actually going to like wander around a little bit. Um, I actually felt kind of bad. I actually haggled with him mm, uh, on this commission a little bit because, again, I was working on a small budget. I wasn't like beating him over the head with it. I think he wanted like 175 and I was like, what, you doing 150 uh, And he was like, I was like, I hate myself for asking this. And this is all true, by the way. It's documented. It's uh, it's on my YouTube channel. If you if you look up the Artist Alley video for Boston Comic Con 2015, you'll see the whole how it all plays out there. Um, anyway, so milk and cheese vinyls. Uh, there's a little comic on the back here, and I will. Uh, it's not sealed, so I'll open it up. Try to keep it in the plastic just so they don't all fall out. Let's see. Oh, that's a pretty good shot. So there they are. <laughs> just 
totally ridiculous. Uh, I love that I have this though. Um, got the you know milk and cheese, obviously. You know who's who. Uh, what is it? The the carton of hate and the wedge of spite. Um, and they also come with let's see a sledgehammer here, um, a board with like a nail in it, and a bottle of gin, a broken bottle of gin here. So if you don't know these characters, they're basically like super violent alcoholic dairy products. Dairy products gone bad. And uh, they pretty much just run around causing mayhem and, um, you know, watching TV in their off time. Uh, so they're really funny. Uh, I definitely suggest checking it out. Milk and Cheese, Evan Dorkin. Um, so really cool. I This was actually an eBay purchase. Um, I feel like I got a decent deal on it. Again, it was a long time ago. I probably showed this in one of my videos, but I want to say I paid like 40 bucks for it shipped. So, um, which has been like the lowest price I've seen it on eBay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. They should be on display. I, um, I'm working with really limited space here. It's kind of sad. Um, it's really like one side of my bedroom. So like it starts with that glass display case over there. Um, I have my like wooden kind of a like block cube section down here that you can't see. That's all Transformers. Um, and then I have, you know, some of the bigger stuff up here. The Ghostbusters Firehouse, Devastator, um, Johnny Five from Short Circuit. Technodrome. And then over here, you can't see it. I posted a picture on Instagram, but you got like Pee Wee, Teddy Ruxpin, um, the Ninja Turtles sewer playset, which I picked up at that toy show that I vendored at. Um, you know, some other stuff. And like I said, there's a ton I have in my closet. I still have a storage unit. Um, so I think like everyone, the, the goal in life is to uh, finally own a, a property <laughs> or something where uh you have room or a room to really like give everything you have in your collection it's due so life goals right <clears throat> all right so that was that um if one of you just made a comment i want to i wanted to respond to it let's see uh blah 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 blah, blah. i don't think what did one of you just say? I wanted to respond to it. Mm, okay. Well, I'll wait for that. So, and then at the end, at the end of and all these trips, we all sign programs. Um, you know, write little stupid messages. I try to be like totally random with mine, like nonsensical. Like, I think the first year I was writing like, Toy Story quotes or something. I was like, there's a snake in my boots. And just like, what? <laughs> Who's this weird guy that we invited into my house? Um, or I try to think of like, uh, you know, quotes or stuff from the convention itself. So uh, I'll just do a quick flash of mine. I'm covering it up because um, somebody drew something obscene <laughs> on the on uh, Miss Woman here. Uh, you can you know let your mind wander with that one. But that was the program after that. <laughs> it's always tough. So I I love these because it, it really like, it's like the end cap of the trip. Everybody signs their programs, writes a little message. Um, but I will say it's also one of the, the toughest parts uh, of getting together because I don't know about you guys, but I almost feel like you have to kind of encapsulate the entire trip or like your friendship in one little blurb. And it's like, like Johnny knows, like, again, like you have this, all this pressure to like, just write something really witty or funny just to like justify like your friendship in a way, or like what, like, you know, how strong your bond is. And it just, it doesn't always work like that. And I think like, you know, one of the great things about us is that, you know, our, our kind of like meetings are, you know, organic and it's not always, <laughs> um, uh, you know, you can't force that sort of thing. And you, you know, and, and obviously, you know, for the long convention, not everybody's going to be doing like a stand up routine the whole time. 
Um, so, you know, you have your lulls, but, you know, there's people in the group and, you know, it all, everybody takes their time in the sun and, and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, it's like, so there's definitely been times where I feel like, like last year with Johnny's program, I kind of like kicked myself afterwards. Like I did something really lazy, kind of akin to uh, what Scott did with this woman. And, uh, and I was just like, oh, man, like there were so many better moments and things that I thought of after the fact. But, oh, well, uh, it's one of those things where we'll always remember them. Um, and, you know, we have my GoPro footage to kind of to reminisce on the good times. So that that's uh, that's pretty much going to bring this video as far as what I did and everything. Uh, it's obviously want to say thank you to Scott for making it all possible, his family for enduring us. Um, it's really cool. Like if, if I didn't have like that open invitation, a place to stay, like I probably, this probably would never have happened. Um, you know, and I want to thank them all for not being like quick, creepy internet guys. Uh, even though you know, I feel like that, that image will never change from my wife's <laughs> my wife's mind uh she's not a bad person it's just you know some people can't get over the stigma of the internet <clears throat> uh so yeah just the awesome group of guys love being there love that they humor me even though i'm not really a comic person uh and uh yeah so i don't want to end on that note what i will do is one of you wants the pokemon theme song so i'll sing that but for those of you that don't care, I want to just show you what's been going on over here. Just some more stuff to my collection. Uh, you already saw Pee-wee, so he's fighting the glare there. But sealed Pee-wee Herman. Got a grubby in the box. Complete. He works. Uh, mad glare, huh? Dang. Uh, whatever. Whoa. Oh, there's that uh, other Rob Kilroy commission. That was a random, like, mashup between Poyo from Chu and Groucho Marx. Kind of random. Um, there's the G.I. Joe Silent Issue 21. So I still do buy books from time to time. Got some boxes from some of my G1 Transformers. The Ninja Turtles Sewer Playset, which is my latest purchase. Not complete by any means, but I bought it in a lot for like $10. There's Billy Baloney from Pee Wee's Playhouse. Kind of, He doesn't have any bones, so he just kind of sits there. Uh, Teddy Ruxpin, and then buried back there is also a Pee Wee's Playhouse. I have that book. Oh, awesome! You know, I I met Larry Hama, and uh, in New York Comic Con, but that was like before I knew much about him. I think I had him sign some random like Venom book or something that he worked on. Oh yeah, I was uh, one thing I was kicking the the tires on was a uh, bone. I, I'm into bone. I was into, I'm into bone <laughs> bone zone. Um, I was into bone, the graphic novel. I don't know why I said that's so robotic. You probably don't believe me, but uh, I read the whole thing. I actually found some of the action figures at a toy show, which again, spoiler alert, will be showing up in a video at some point. Um, there was that. And uh, I saw a bone number one on the wall. I saw that it was only $25. I knew that was that couldn't be right, but I checked anyways, and of course it wasn't a first printing, it was a second printing. Um, and uh, I wasn't really ever gonna buy it, but I'll make it seem like the uh, crossroads in the crossroads. Um, that, uh, you know, the guys, you know, just like, don't do it, it's not worth it. So one day I'll have a bone number one first printing. Um, you know, that being said, I never thought I would have a milk and cheese number one first printing, but that actually came from, I think, Hero Hunter, another YouTuber from the uh, comic book community. So never say never, I guess, right? And isn't that why we, owe, isn't that why we make these YouTube videos in the hopes that somebody will give us free stuff? <clears throat> hint, hint, no, just kidding. Scumbag! Um... All right, so I feel like there was something else from Comic-Con I wanted to talk about. Oh, Puppet Master. So talk about random, right? So I'm not really a horror guy, um, but I was I really like that Puppet Master 
those Puppet Master movies. If you don't remember, they were like little like demonic figures. Um, they all had their own personalities. Like there was one where it was like a a female doll that like puked out leeches, and like the leeches would like suck your blood or something. I haven't watched the movie or any of those movies in forever. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, there was there's that. There was a, a guy named Pinhead who had like a really small head, but like big beefy arms which is like beat the crap out of you um there was a kind of like this nazi soldier guy with a, a drill on his head and he would you know drill your eyes out and stuff uh there was another like darth vader looking dude who i think he had like a flamethrower there was a wild west cowboy who had like i think it was called six shooters so he actually had guns that would shoot you so they were like literally like puppets that would come to life and do their bidding. I'm not, I forget the story as to like if they were actually alive or blah blah blah. Oh, Blade too. Yeah, the the white guy, the white face guy that had the knife. I'm pretty sure that's Blade. So yeah, it's kind of like a a more horrific version of Small Soldiers. Uh, anyway, so I didn't know they made action figures based on that movie. So at this convention, I saw I saw like a, a Halloween themed pinhead. Um, the chick with the leeches, the, I saw Blade, um, and, and one other guy, I forget who, but I was like, oh man, those look really cool. Uh, but the problem was, again, I didn't really save up for the con, I wasn't there from, uh, you know, if, if I'd been there on Sunday. each around there and uh that pinhead that halloween pinhead was 60 so i don't know if that's a more rare version so again in hindsight i'm like i really struggled with it like 30 doesn't sound that bad yeah it sounds bad to like someone like me who's like digging through bins and looking for like loose figures for like a dollar or whatever but 30 dollars doesn't seem that bad <laughs> um and i was trying to like do research but like again at, i had already spent my money on this other stuff that i wanted I, I was really at like the end of my budget i didn't want to like max out credit cards and be all like crazy like i always pride myself on my you know my restraint my patience my like um just being able to like make smarter decisions when it comes to collecting because like Anybody can go on eBay and go on a spending spree. Anybody can go to Comic Con and just throw money at a problem. Like, but that's not 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 a problem. But at a collection, but that's not fun for me. Like, I like being able to find things for cheap, and <laughs> that is another way to spend thirty dollars. Yes, um, it's just a way to find things for cheap um, and kind of justify this obsession. You know, we all have with toys because it's like. Again, yeah, I can go bankrupt buying things, but it's just not, it's not fun. It's not a good sense of use of resources. And, you know, I like the journey. I like getting there without, um, just, you know, it makes me feel better. I don't know. You know what I mean? What's the fun in just like buying things online? Yeah, the hunt rules it all. It's all about the thrill. Thank you. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that is definitely something that I am going to keep an eye out for. Um, again, if if I didn't buy that Brack figure, I probably would have came up with one of those. Or if I had some more money uh, or had Sunday to work with. But again, not losing any sleep over it. It's not like I passed up on a Freddy figure. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> all right, so at this point... I think I promised one of you I would sing the Pokemon song. I don't know how uh, how many of you care enough. Uh, I kind of uh, <laughs> messed up with the... Uh, I kind of annoyed some of our posse. Um, they're very much into, like, I don't even know, instrument, angry, banging music. Uh, the only one I remember is Fugazi, <laughs> which I don't even know if that qualifies. Um, but they're into that, and I'm the one who's like in the back seat singing, like, 
Jennifer Lopez and Leon uh, Leanne Rhymes. Like I had a uh, waiting for tonight stuck in my head the whole trip. So I was just like waiting for tonight. Whoa. When you will be here in my arms, waiting for tonight. Whoa. I've dreamed of this love for so long, waiting for tonight. Uh, and then Leanne Rhymes just can't fight the moonlight. Which uh, I feel like, and Scott's wife, bless her soul, version. And I feel like, I feel like if we just played that in the car at the right decibel, I would have won the guys over. And, you know, they would have forgot, forgot all about Fugazi and 311. Just kidding. They don't like 311. Um, but uh, I tried to tell them that. Amber is the color of your energy. Whoa. God. My voice is bad enough as is, but after talking for like an hour and a half, it's even worse. All right. So let's end it with Pokemon, right? Woo. Um, let me just... Uh, I want to be the very best, like no one ever, ever was. To catch them is my true test, to train them is my cause. I will travel across the land, searching far and wide. Each Pokemon to understand the power that's inside. Pokemon, gotta catch them. <laughs> it's you and me. I know it's my destiny, Pokemon. Ooh, you're my best friend in a world we must defend. Pokemon, gotta catch them. A oh, heart so true. Our courage will pull us through. You teach me and I'll teach you. Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. I feel like I missed a few verses, but not bad. Not bad at all. All right, guys. <laughs> um, thank you for watching. Again, I, I really don't know what I'm doing in my YouTube life. I want to be active. I like doing the produce stuff, but this is just so much easier. Um, one thing that I will not shy away from, I promise, is when I do have GoPro footage, like when I go to toy shows, flea markets, conventions, that is definitely going to be edited because there's no other way to do it. Um, so I will continue to make those edited videos that you might be used to, that kind of style that you might appreciate a little bit more. But I think for the day in, day out stuff, I'm just going to do live videos because it's the only way I can kind of keep active and not just have what I buy pile and pile up, um, which is too bad because, I did, again, I do like to produce stuff. I do have big ideas um, because... Like that Sailor Moon stuff that I haven't shown. Like I, I really wanted to do something with my daughters. Um, just kind of like having fun with it. Like, you know, us fighting over them. And I, had, I had some good ideas, but who knows by the time I get to them, right? So anyways, yeah, I'll just keep doing the live thing to when I don't have time to produce stuff. But I definitely have a backlog of flea market visits and Comic-Con stuff to, to work with uh, otherwise. So anyways, thanks as well uh thanks as watching thanks as always for watching um thanks for indulging me thanks for keeping my dreams alive thanks for the chest hair i don't know um okay that's all i got bye love you guys